Welcome back to another video. Now, this is a follow-up from my previous Cracking JSON Web Tokens video, and you don't necessarily need to have watched it, but it does cover the foundations of what a JSON Web Token is if you're unfamiliar with them. Now, today we're going to look at two attacks, both targeting the header of our JWTs. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Before we talk about header injection, let's go a little bit deeper into the headers of a JWT. The only mandatory header is alg, according to the specification. However, we often see type in there and other things like key ID, which we'll see later on. In our first attack, we're going to tamper with the alg header itself. But in the second, we'll look at how we can inject other headers to cause the application to use a key that we provide rather than the one intended by the application. The other headers that we might be interested in are JSON Web Key, JWK, JSON Web Key Set URL, JKU, and the key ID, KID. JSON Web Keys are a data structure that represents a cryptographic key. As expected, it's used to sign and verify JWTs and can have various properties like the key type and the algorithm. The JKU header is a URL that points to a JSON Web Key Set, JWKS which is like it sounds, a set of JWKs that can represent multiple keys. This is really handy because often if we want to rotate keys, we can grab the latest public key from the specified URL. And the key ID KID lets us specify the key we are looking for from a JSON web key set. So together, these are used to manage and identify which keys to use when signing and verifying a JWT. Now, I realize that's quite a lot to take in, but we'll be looking at this in a little bit more detail in our second lab. So going back to our first attack on the algorithm header, we're going to modify the value to none. And what this does is tell the application to not use an algorithm and essentially trust and decode the token with no verification. Now, the testing I did with this attack turned out to be pretty interesting, as the packages I tested ended up handling the payload differently. The two main packages I looked at were JSON Web Token for Node.js and PyJWT, which is a Python library commonly used in Flask applications. I can't say this for every package or scenario, but both of these packages required me to specify the use of the NUN algorithm, which was nice to see. I'm sure there are some libraries out there that allow this behavior by default. Also, after getting the Node.js version of my app handling the non-algorithm correctly, I had to handle the secret differently because if you're using the alg non, then your key or secret needs to be null. All in all, it's actually a little annoying to write an application that's vulnerable to the alg non attack if you're using reputable up-to-date libraries in a normal way. And this makes sense because I think this attack goes as far back as 2015, or at least it's listed under CV 2015 something something. But as we walk through the code and you're like, hey, why is this set up to clearly be vulnerable to this attack by specifically allowing the non-algorithm in our algorithms list? Well, now you know why because we have to. Just before we dive in, I wanted to mention that it's still important to know about these kinds of attacks because they may still come up from time to time. For example, in legacy applications, or if two systems are integrated and maybe one dev team doesn't want to share the secret or key with another dev team, but still want to process tokens from a third party application. In this instance, they may allow for non-signed tokens without thinking about how that would impact other tokens that are sensitive to being tampered with. Or you could simply be doing a CTF. All good reasons for knowing this technique. Let's take a quick look at our sample application for the first attack. All right, so we have our application here. So we can ignore lines one, four, and five because this is just express, which is gonna make routing and things like that a little bit easier, but not integral to the application or, or the attack we're trying to demonstrate. Line two is important, however, as we're importing the JSON web token library and assigning this to JWT. So every time you see JWT dot something, you know that we're using the JSON web token library like down here. So jwt.sign for example. 
On line seven, we're defining the secrets. So please like and subscribe, of course. And this is a symmetric secret. So this is going to be used to encrypt and decrypt or sign and verify our token. I will at some point dive into HMAX and asymmetric encryption and using public and private keys for JSON web tokens, probably something for another video. Now on line nine, we have our get slash JWT endpoint. So we just define a payload. Obviously here, this would be the logic of your application building the payload. And then we have const token equals JWT dot sign. And we're going to include the payload and use the secret to sign it. And we're going to use the algorithm HS256. And then we simply return this token. Now, next up, you can see a load of code that I've commented out. And this is my original code that I thought would work. So I thought basically all that I needed to do to include none in the algorithm is to include it in my algorithms list. But this ended up to not be the case. So I have app.post, verify JWT, and then we grab the token from the request body. And then we do JWT.verify pass in the token, the secrets, and the allowed algorithms. And then if it's all good, we return valid token. If there's an error, we return invalid token. This didn't work, unfortunately. So I had to rewrite this endpoint. And if we scroll down, from, we can see from line 26 what's happened. When you pass in a token with the algorithm none, you're not allowed to pass in a defined key or secret. So what I had to do is essentially the same thing, but add this code here, which decodes the header. So we have decoded header equals jwt.decode. Notice we're not verifying this, we're just decoding. And then what we're doing here is we're defining a new key. And if the decoded header.algorithm is equal to none, we set the key to null. Otherwise, we set the key to secrets, which of course is defined up here on line seven. And this is just a ternary operator. This does the exact same thing. It was my original way of doing it, but I thought this was a little bit easier to read because not everybody uses uh, this style of development or this style of if statements. But the output of line 29 and the output of line 30 to 35 is exactly the same, basically. So here we come to our decoded token, we do our JWT.verify and we pass in the token. And of course, if the token uses the none algorithm, this key is gonna be set to none. And if it's using HS256, it's gonna be set to secret. And these are the allowed algorithms. And then if it's valid, we return a message saying valid token and hello, decoded token.username, otherwise, we return invalid token. So that's the application. Let's jump in and demo the attack. All right, so we're just gonna spin up our application. So node app.js looks like we're running on 3001. And then all we're gonna do is curl http slash slash localhost 3001 and grab our token with slash JWT. So usually I think, or at least in the last video, I used jwt.io to decode and mess around with the token. However, unfortunately this isn't going to work because for some reason it doesn't support the none algorithm. And if I try and do this manually, uh, we don't get a token back, but this is okay. We could also do this in, t in the terminal, but it's a little bit easier to use online tools. If we come to token.dev, paste in our token here, and then we can either edit it manually or just come to the none algorithm here. And there is one little problem with this, but we'll address that in a second. So I'm just gonna copy this and then curl at our payload and then we want http slash slash localhost 3001 jwt and i suspect the fact that we don't have a trailing dot is going to throw an error which it does it says cannot read properties of null different applications might behave slightly differently when passing json web tokens but in this case 
we need our dot and we get a valid token. And let me just clear my screen and send this again so it's a little bit easier to see. So we have valid token message hello user. And what we can do with this is we can just, in fact, come back to this and demo that this works by just saying Alex. And I only need the second part of this token because the first part is the header and they're decoded separately or encoded separately with base64. Paste this in and we have a valid token with the message hello Alex. So our attack is working as expected. Now I also want to kind of show this in Burp Suite because Burp Suite has a great extension called JWT Editor or something like this. We'll see in a second. And it's a useful one for testing JWTs instead of using the terminal or doing everything manually. So let's grab a fresh token and route this through our proxy. So curl http slash slash local whoops host 3001 slash JWT. And we're just going to do proxy uh, http localhost port 8080. And we should see this pop up. And if you do have this JWT editor keys installed, it automatically highlights requests and responses that have a JSON web token present in green, which is quite handy. And what we can do is we're just going to grab this token and then we're going to send it to verify. But again, we're going to send it through the proxy. Oops, AT80. So we have valid token message equals hello user. And here you'll see that we have a new tab open and I'll just move myself out of the way for a second so we can see a bit better. We have this JSON web token tab so we can start interacting with this and same with this post, you'll see the JSON web token tab here as well. If you don't have this installed, by the way, you can come to extensions, the app store, Search for JWT and it's this one, JWT Editor. And then all we're going to do is we're going to send this post to the repeater with Control R or you can right click Send to Repeater. And again, you have this tab open here. And there's a couple of ways to do this. We can either just modify the information in here or we can just do the none signing algorithm and click that. Send it. It's still valid. And as you can see, even though we don't have a signature, we're still good to go. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about interacting with JWTs and Burp Suite, then there is a great article here on the Web Security Academy, and this tells you all about how to interact with JSON web tokens with this Burp Suite plugin. So super helpful if you want to go and check that out. And this is actually where we want to be for our next attack. So let's take a quick look at JWK header injection. So with JWK header injection, this is an attack that exploits the insecure handling of JSON web keys embedded in the JWT header. Now in a secure implementation, the server should rely on a trusted source of public keys, such as a JWKS endpoint to verify the token's signature. However, if the server accepts a JWK provided in the token header by the client, we can craft a token with a custom JWK containing our public key, and then we can sign the key with our private key that we control, effectively forging a valid token. So let's take a look at how we can do this. And I've come to Port Swigger Academy, so I'm just going to access the lab. Here we are, and I think we can come to my accounts and it gives us some credentials to log in. And the objective of this lab, so if the text is a little bit small, is basically to access the admin panel. So we have an account as Dina and Peter, and we log ourselves in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on our proxy and just hit refresh we can actually see that we have a token already. And here we are, we have the my accounts and everything with a JSON web token detected is highlighted in green. Let's take a quick look and I'm just gonna move myself out of the way. 
So here you can see that we have this cookie session equals, and this is our JSON web token. And you can see that it's quite long. So we could go in and decode this, but we don't need to. We can just switch over to JSON web token tab here, and we can see all of the information that we need. So in the header, we've got a couple of things. We've got the kid and the algorithm RS-256, and we have the ISS, which is Portswigger, and the sub, which is Vina. So this is our username. And before we carry on, what we want to do is maybe just grab this and see if we can just grab the admin endpoints and see what it says. So it says admin interface only accessible or only available if logged in as an administrator. So we come back here and we can see this request here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to the repeater and I'm just going to hit send. And we have, again, the admin interface is only logged in if available as an administrator. Now, to pull off this attack, we actually need our own public private keys. And we could generate these, but it's much easier if we just come to JWT editor keys. You can see that I've already created some, but let's just create a new one for the video. And we do new RSA key. And we'll select 2048 JWK and hit generate. And then we'll just hit OK. And you can see that this has been added to our list of keys. Now I'll come back to repeater. And all we want to do is we want to come into attack and embed JWK. So we're embedding a new header, which is going to be our key. And we can choose our key from the list. Both of these are RSA 2048. So either of them are OK, but use the one that you generated. Click OK. And you can see our headers have changed. We have this new embedded JWK in the header. So this isn't going to work just yet because we actually need to update the sub here. So we're just going to update this to admin. And unfortunately, because I updated this after adding our key, we need to re-add it because it's going to sign the token when we embed our JWK. So obviously, we've changed the token since we previously signed it. Hit OK and then hit send. And we'll just come to render. We probably need administrator instead of admin. So let's try this again, embed JWK. Hit send and we get the admin interface, which is what we want. And I, I, if I recall, the objective is to delete one of the users. So we need to delete the user, Carlos. So we can just come back into here, find the URI for this. So slash admin slash delete username equals Carlos. Copy this, come back to our request and we can just update our request and hit send. And we get a 302 found, which is good. Follow the redirection and we can look down here for the congratulations banner or we can hit render and we get congratulations, you solved the lab, which is great. So that's it for today's video. Now, there's still a lot more to look at and consider, but I hope this gives you some insight into how we can attack JSON web tokens. I'll catch you next time.